So another gadget has arrived from China just in time for the weekend, and it's an electricity saving box. And apparently, um, this device is reducing the electric appliances getting fever and other useful things. To increase the capacity of using the system, equipment can retard the pressure of the switch or circuit convenient installing and using. Save electricity, save money for customers every minute, every second after installing. Though that's helpful. Anyway, it's a rather dog-eared and slightly horribly coloured box, but what we have inside this is the energy plug. And it's obviously designed to take different uh, plug styles. In this case, it's the British square pin plug. And it rattles. Um, OK, so it's got two green LEDs, and I've no doubt these will light up. Yes, they lit up. Not very brightly, I have to say. But I'm not sure. Of, uh, I'm guessing it's probably not doing much else other than lighting up. No, it, it does actually seem to have a capacitor in it, because it just gave me a little zing. OK. Right. No charge left. Let's, um... Let's see if this one actually has a capacitor connected in it. So I'll set this to 20 microfarad rather optimistically. Four point nine eight microfarad. So the best part of five microfarad. I wonder if it's just a standard four point seven microfarad capacitor tolerance, or if it is actually a five microfarad capacitor. That's quite high. So they may actually be trying to do what's called power factor correction here. Oh, well, that's kind of intriguing now, because a capacitor uh, applied across the mains, if you've got uh, the main sine wave, the voltage sine wave going up and down, normally in what's called unity power factor, which is a value of 1, the voltage goes up and down at the same rate of the current, and in, uh, when you've got an inductive load, the actual current will lag the voltage and when you've got a, resi a capacitive load, it'll actually lead the voltage. So this isn't actually terribly important if you're in the home, but I'm guessing that's what they're trying to do if it's got such a modestly value capacitor in it. Um, that's interesting. But anyway, power factor, uh, the whole point is that if the you've got an inductive or capacitive load, it looks as though it's taking more power than it actually is. And in industrial applications where you've got motors, they'll stick a capacitor across the motor to try and um, uh, compensate for that. It brings the uh, perceived power back into a sort of unity. But, um, uh, right, OK, uh, let's open this up then. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? If that's five, micro, five microfarad, 5 microfarad, which is 0 0.000005 farad. Um, let's do the let's do a wee experiment then. Xc, capacitive reactants, equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. I am going to open this uh, shortly. I'm sorry about uh, the maths here. I'm just kind of intrigued. So, uh, 2 times 3.14 times 50 hertz times point zero 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 five the uh, five microfarad um, equals so that's one divided by zero point zero zero one five seven would give equivalent resistance across the mains of one divided by point zero zero one five seven of six hundred and thirty seven ohms. Now, what's a current on 240, would that be? I equals V over R. So, just roughly, it's 240 divided by 637 ohms would equal... It's going to give an equivalent current flow of 0 0.37... Say, 7 amps. So, that's going to be 377 milliamps. So, let's actually see if this registers in a power plug. Where's a power plug? Um, power plug. The, I'm not going to touch the pins this time and unplug it. Should have a discharge resistor. I think it has, but uh, it was just a wee bit slow. 
zero watts because it's not it's purely representing a, a capacitive load although the tiny amount will be going through these LEDs that's kind of intriguing 247 volts 391 milliamps so I wasn't too far off so just to, to double check let's go back round to the 200 let's do the maths again uh, 247 divided by 637 ohms equals 387 milliamps. So what was I getting? 391. That's that's really close, isn't it? That's uh, just 4 milliamps off. That's incredibly accurate. That's nice. I like it when stuff like that comes. Right, I'll just uh, unplug this again. I'm just going to... Yeah, I saw a wee spark there. That's why I got a nip. Okay, that was intriguing. I quite enjoyed that little bit of maths there, even though it is boring as shit to everybody else. Anyway, let's open this up. You can see... Okay... Let's see what is actually inside. Well, there's a big fat capacitor. That's quite a lot of circuitry compared to what I've seen in previous ones. I have taken uh, tackier ones apart. There's a fuse, which is jolly nice. A uh, metal oxide varistor. I'm looking at this other little capacitor, is that maybe for the LEDs? It's 100 nano. Oh, little bits of plastic. Oh, I see where they are. They're the bits that are supposed to hold the capacitor in alignment, but uh, they've obviously had a bit of an incident. Okay. Right, let's, uh, let's draw this out then. What have we got here? They've actually got uh, the fuse and the live, which is nice. Live, neutral. So they've got a fuse on the live to start off with. And then neutral. <laughs> After that, they're going straight to the big fat capacitor. Five microfarad. Let's see, does it say anything on this box? No, it doesn't. It reminds me of the capacitors that are used in the um, stroboscopes. The little strobes. But, uh, nothing really obvious there. Um, what else we got? So we've got uh, the metal oxide varistors across that. So um, that'll be drawn like that. And is that little resistor as well? 270k, red, violet, yellow. Is that across it? Yes, it is. That'll be the discharge resistor. That's actually a modestly low value, but it obviously wasn't discharging terribly fast. Or maybe I was just incredibly impatient, and maybe I shouldn't actually have stuck my fingers over the terminals as soon as I unplugged it anyway, but it's just a silly little habit I've got. Okay, so what else have we got here? So, live, having gone through the fuse, also goes through that capacitor. 100 nano. Which doesn't have a discharge resistor, but that's not really critical because there is one across the whole input to the circuit. Then it goes to two diodes. This looks like a full-on... Um, this looks like a full-on... Capacitive dropper with a bridge rectifier. Zero fifty ohm, one hundred ohm, odd number of. Yeah. Okay. So the other side neutral goes to. It's going straight to. Two diodes. 
Yep, so that is a full-on bridge. And after this point, I'm guessing, I mean, the active bit of the circuit is basically it's the capacitor, the uh, interference presser and the resistor. I'll, that's a 270 key. Um, three positions for LEDs. The LEDs are all, all those positions are in parallel, so it doesn't matter whether they put one or three in. It's, if they're using capacitive dropper, it would have been more efficient to wire them in series and put a link in the one that wasn't used. They would have doubled the brightness effectively of the LEDs if they'd done that. So then we've got a 100 megafarad. What voltage is that? It just says 100 megafarad. Oh, it just really does just say 100 megafarad. Does that connect across the output of the diodes? I think it is. Well, there's the positive and the negatives. Yeah, that's just across the direct far. Oh, but uh, it's using a resistor. Okay, so it's using a capacitor. 100 megafarad. Indeterminate voltage. And it appears to be using a resistor across that of 510 ohms. Is that really just hooked straight across that? It is. 510 ohms. So it's probably acting with the capacitor a bit like a potential divider to keep the voltage from floating too high in that. Not the most efficient way of doing things. Um, and then there's a resistor of 100 ohms. going to the LEDs. In this case, there are just two. And they're in parallel. And the other side of those LEDs will just be going straight. It is. It's just going straight to the... So there we have it. There's the circuit inside it. Right, that's kind of interesting. It's the most complete one I've ever seen. I've really come across um, some weird ones in the past that the circuitry made no sense. And it's almost as if people had copied people had copied people and it just ended up being a real butchered mess. But this one actually does seem to be making an effort to be something. But having said that, <coughs> although you power factor only really applies to industrial premises, it's not really got any major advantages in a, a home environment, what we'd call domestic in the UK, uh, in the home. And... In the industrial environment, uh, the electrical supply companies do charge industrial companies for having a bad power factor. And it makes sense then to have um, what they have in, in their main incoming supply in big industrial complexes switched capacitor banks that basically switch capacitors in in stages to compensate for the current um, power factor of the uh, phase shift caused by all the inductive loads of the machinery. The other option is, as, as I mentioned earlier, to have the um, the a capacitor per motor, so that when a motor's turned on, it, it uh, corrects it. But this is all irrelevant because your domestic, your home electric meter, doesn't monitor power factor. It doesn't see that. It doesn't look at what they call apparent power. It looks at actual power. So you can buy one of these. You can plug it in, and it'll compensate randomly for any permanently attached inductive loads in the house, but it won't actually... Re it won't actually reduce your power consumption in any way whatsoever. It won't affect your meter at all. And I've seen some uh, videos on YouTube of people demonstrating these uh, pyramid marketing type things where they've got a wee suitcase with a motor in it and they show how when you plug it in the, all the power drops. And what that's doing is it is and they've chosen the lossiest and most horrible inductive motor and obviously the capacitor that's in it is having some effect on that. But it isn't going to change the speed the meter rotates. It's not going to change the amount of electricity you're charging in your house. So it's interesting that they have implemented one in a semi-real way, but again, you just randomly sticking a capacitor on, it's a, it's a bit like putting a weight on one side of a jigsaw, a, a jigsaw, a seesaw, it, um, or a teeter-totter. 
it's not going to have any predictable effect. You don't know what weight is going to be on the other end. It's it's not it's not a very scientific way of doing things, but it is. Um, it's obviously people believe this is doing something, and it certainly seems to be making an effort to actually pretend to be doing something. So. Of the ones I've opened, it's actually the best, but again, it doesn't do anything real. But uh, there you go, it's, it's quite neat, it's quite fun taking that to bits.